Where have you been? Where has he been? Where in the world is Waldo? Amen. Well, it's Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. It is officially October 31st. And some say it's Halloween. Some say it's Reformation Day. Some say it's a day where you worship the dead and where you worship evil spirits. But I believe that every day belongs to the Lord. This day does not belong to the devil. Sure, the enemy will try to steal a day like today. Like uh, the Yankees fans tried to steal the ball out of the mitt of a Dodgers player. Uh, and just like the Democrats, the leftists are trying to steal the elections, as always. But, uh, you know, this day belongs to the Lord. And, uh, and I just want to encourage you. You might be going through a hard, difficult season. But, you know, it still, you know, it still belongs to God. And he will truly make lemonade out of the lemons. Amen. And uh, <laughs> so praise the Lord. I have, I have a number of things I, I just want to share and talk about. So just pray with me so that I don't end this broadcast out of my emotions. Because I am an emotional person, just like you are. Um, I, I apologize. We're supposed to be on live for the prophetic word of the month for November. But there was some technical difficulties. So we have pushed that back to Sunday, November 3rd. Um, and uh, here I am. Uh, I'm actually here in Bahrain. I just arrived a few hours ago, and it's hilarious. Today, I've just been feeling so tired. It's been a, exactly about one week since I arrived in the Middle East. I don't know if it's a collection of jet lag. I mean, you know, I only ministered seven times in three days, flew to another country, and now I'm in my third country in a week and a half time. Uh, but it's my first time at Bahrain, and I was shocked. I was shocked, y'all, because uh, I arrived at the hotel here, and uh, I was shocked to find out that the Bahrain dinar, which is their currency here in this country, the Bahrain dinar um, is stronger than the U.S. dollar currency. Isn't that crazy? So the things you learn, right? And I was shocked because I thought only euros... And English pounds were stronger than the U.S. dollar. I thought the U.S. dollar was quite strong. But nah, man. You know what the strongest currency is? Kuwaiti dinar, number one. Number two is this country, Bahrain. This little tiny country. It's my first time here. I'm really happy to be here. I know it's a divine appointment. Uh, and they call Bahrain the Vegas of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and today's Halloween day, of course, here in... Uh, in Bahrain in the Middle East. Hallelujah. So here I am. But anyways, once again, my apologies. We're supposed to do the prophetic word of the month for November, but we're pushing it back. So I thought I'd say hello. Say what's up. I've been very busy. This is my third country in the last one and a half weeks. Glory to God. And this is my really my last big mission trip of this year. Does anybody like to win souls? Does anybody uh, like to, the go of the gospel, right? And maybe some of you, you're not able to go internationally, but you could still be the hands and feet of Jesus right where you are. You could still be the light of Jesus right where you are, in your workplace, in Los Angeles, at the Dodger Stadium, eating a Dodger dog, hallelujah, watching the Yankees lose like sore losers, hallelujah, and watching the Democrats lose in Jesus' day. And, uh, you know, you could still, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Uh, but anyway, this is my third country in a week and a half in the GCC, in the Gulf. And, uh, wow, I, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. God's good. Um, it's October 31st here. I'm, I actually leave. Y'all pray for me. I need your prayers because uh, I am tired. Like I said, all day today, I've just kind of been drowsy asleep and uh i even took a nap i mean it's almost 9 p.m here in bahrain but i even took a nap and i didn't want to get up you know but i got up so i could get ready for the broadcast and go figure the broadcast isn't happening today so i thought i'd just say hello because i did my hair for you <laughs> yeah 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 bam bam thanks for the prayers to finish strong so this is my last Big international trip. 
Actually, in a few weeks, I'll be in Mexico City for my first time. And I've been invited to pray uh, at a stadium of 20,000 people in Mexico City. Um, and it's a national day of prayer in Mexico City. And mostly all five form ministers, apostles, prophets, bishops. So God is good. 20,000 in the state of Mexico City. That's going to be November 21st, November 23rd. Amen. And then it's Thanksgiving time, of course. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I'm excited for the prophetic word for November. So be on the lookout for that. Once again, I'm doing the weave. You know, President Trump calls it the weave. The Korean weave. Us Koreans have the best weave. It's sold worldwide, is it not? Hallelujah. <laughs> but I'm doing the weave because I'm going back to what I just said. This is my third country in a week and a half time. And uh, <laughs> first I went to Qatar. We had seven meetings in three days, y'all. And one day I preached five times. I was scheduled to preach six times on that Friday. But we only did five. And man, and then after that I went to Dubai, went to Abu Dhabi and UAE. Preached three times and I had some good rest, honestly. Some rest, some fun. Good to work out, you know what I'm saying? Bam, bam. And then from there, I just arrived at the Bahrain today. And it's my first time. It's a little tiny island country. It's, it's hilarious. And they call Bahrain the Vegas of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> but Bahrain has the second strongest currency in the world. Isn't that wild? Tiny little island country. Might, might honestly be the size of like, like uh, not even the size of Maui. Maybe, I don't know, but tiny little island country. Google it. I've never even heard of Bahrain till this year, right? But uh, God is good. And then uh, I minister tomorrow night. And then November 2nd, pretty much midnight, I fly back. And we are going back. And this is what I really want you to pray for. We're going back. I'm flying straight. I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm flying straight into D.C., y'all. I'm flying straight into D.C. Now, we are doing a DMV prayer strike um, in the heart of Washington, D.C. In the heart of Washington, D.C. November 3rd, 4th, 5th. November 3rd, Papa Gio uh, is doing a David's Ten event. I think they switched the location to the National Mall. And in November 4th and 5th, all the way up to the end of the United States election until we see the full final victory of number 45, who's actually originally number 46 and number 47, President Donald J. Trump. We're going to be boots on the ground in Washington, D.C., holding a prophetic prayer convocation in the ground, believing that as we are, you know, pounding the heavens and declaring the word of God, we are intercepting any demonic interference, any demonic interference against our elections. So, you know, right after here, <laughs> being here in the Middle East, I'm flying right back to D.C. And uh, so catch me outside, y'all. I'm going right back to D.C. And um, yeah, isn't it incredible, Carrie Edwards? President Trump will literally be the only president who won three years in a row. And of course, some people will say, oh, he didn't win the second term. Well, he did. It was stolen. And, you know, too big to rig. That's the saying, you know, and uh, they're not going to steal it this time. They're trying, but things are, are, are speeding up. Election interference indictments are speeding up right now. We see that in uh, what? Uh, Pennsylvania. We see that in, in Virginia. We're seeing that happen. Can I get an amen? So that's going to be very important. And I know all of us, hallelujah, we are all excitedly anticipating the red wave, the red landslide. I believe we're going to see at least 100 million votes for Donald Trump. And did you see that parade for Trump they had in Puerto Rico? In Puerto Rico, okay, Boricua es para Trompe, Trompe. They call him Trompe, Mr. Trompe, Senor Trompe. They had a, they had a whole parade in Puerto Rico for President Trump. And of course, you know, they're trying to slam him about the whole garbage thing. But, you know, masterfully, you know, Joseph Robinette Biden calls all of the Trumpsters, the MAGA, the ultra MAGA Knights. And he calls us 
garbage. So, of course, President Trump <laughs> gets picked up in Wisconsin, I think Wisconsin, in a garbage truck so he could throw out the garbage. And God, God, I'm telling you, listen, I want to prophesy right now. God is cleaning out the trash. God is cleaning out the trash. few things I wanted to share. I know I'm just kind of like digressing because I'm tired and it's late. And I haven't seen y'all in a while and I miss you. And, uh, oh yeah, going back to the Korean weave. It's Halloween day. But it's originally Reformation day. So let's talk about this. And then I want to just move into prophetic. Hallelujah. Um, originally, there was a man named Martin Luther. And this is story time, kids. So just give me about four minutes. All right? This is story time. And, you know, originally, the Catholic Church was a huge religious business. It was a tyranny. And the Pope and all of its false teachers did not allow the regular common day people like you and I to read the Bible because the Bible is only written in Latin. Therefore, only the educated and the posh prestige people were able to read Latin at the time. Literally only 1% of the elites. So, of course, there was a lot of misinterpretation, a lot of abuse of the scriptures, a lot of heresy, a lot of false teachings. Uh, so, eventually, one day, a man named Martin Luther, who, hear me now, very similar uh, correlation, Martin Luther, who actually was raised in the upper class of the one percentile, kind of like Donald Trump. Donald Trump was raised, in a sense, with the elite, right? He was raised with the elite, right? With the movie stars, with the Hollywood actors. He, you know, number one TV show that ever aired in America. And so here's this wonderful, interesting correlation, because God will always... Pull people out. Like Moses. Someone say preach doctor, but like Moses. What happened with Moses? Moses was in the one percentile. He was in Pharaoh's house. Yes, he was a Jewish boy that was saved by the miraculous intervention by God. But Moses was in the one percentile. He was in Pharaoh's house. He was being bred to be the next Pharaoh. Come on, somebody. But what happened? God has an unusual way of turning things around and delivering and setting us free for a greater purpose, for a greater purpose of deliverance and salvation in Jesus' name. So God has a way, come on somebody, of picking the unusuals, the nobodies, the underdogs. Come on, Kim Clement, the prophet, had a song years ago called The God of the Underdog. He, God has a way of choosing the unusual, even out of the Bunch the batch that think they're untouchable. And now we see Martin Luther. One man, he began to get inspired by, by God, excuse me. Began to get inspired by God. And he said, enough is enough. Come on, people. He said, enough is enough. As he began to get inspired by God, he was part of the 1% tile. He was part of the elite. He was part of the 1% who could actually read in Latin, the Bible, the word of God. And bam, revelation. Chuck, revelation hit him. And he said, enough is enough. I need to confront this. Something needs to happen. I'm preaching right now. Come on. Help me preach today in Jesus' name. He said, enough is enough. Something needs to happen. He said, I'm sick and tired of the abuse, the misuse of scripture. I'm sick and tired of the church taking advantage of the PD people taking advantage of the common people. So eventually Martin Luther took a stand and he began to write the 95 Thesis, but you ain't one. And he began to write the 95 Thesis and eventually boom, one day, bam, bam, he nailed it on the doors of the Catholic Church and said, this is what the Lord has against you. This is what the, and doesn't that sound like, come on somebody, doesn't that sound like Jesus? Doesn't that sound like John the Baptist? Any reformer who looks like a rebel, who goes against the system of the day, the status quo of the day. Doesn't that sound like Jesus, John the Baptist? Come on, somebody. John the Baptist, his father, Zechariah, was of the priesthood of Israel. So John the Baptist comes from the line, the lineage of the priests. 
And event, but he, he is a wild man with camel hair, you know, eating locusts and honey in the wilderness. You know, I'm a voice in the wilderness. He has the knack with the spirit of Elijah to think that, you know, he's flowing in that prophetic manifestation. God has a way. I'm telling you, your lineage, your line, your story is changing. I'm declaring right now your story is changing. And God, hear me, God is using the areas of frustration to manifest your true you. He's using the areas of frustration. He's using the areas of conflict. He's using that to reveal, to manifest your new you, to produce a new glory on the inside of you. Someone say amen. So Martin Luther of the elite, the 1%, he said enough is enough. Bam. Listen, I want to encourage you right now. Some of you are saying, I'm tired. Some of you are saying, I need a breakthrough. Enough is enough. You're saying, I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being a joke. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm, I'm tired of being tired. Some of you are saying, enough is enough. If that is you, say, that's me. Because a line is being drawn in the sand. And a line is being drawn in the sand. And I see in the spirit right now, and you're going to hear more from me. Concerning the prophetic word of the month for November on Sunday, we have rescheduled it to November 3rd, Sunday. My apologies once again. But you're going to hear more about that. But this is a season where ties are being cut and new ties are being knitted. Do you know how many new relationships I've built literally in the last week? Here, oh, I, I, I could cry. Here in the Middle East, in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, in Qatar. These are Sharia Muslim countries. These Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Gulf has been one of the strictest in the world, persecuting Christians. But now it's a full circle. And the Christian religion, the Christian populace is rising like 11 of, out of the batch of dough. Come on, somebody. Hey. And what an honor. So this is the season where ties are ending. And there are new ties that are being knit. I declare right now, God is bringing an end to a season. And God is starting a new season. And some of you might say, well, Dr. Ben, duh. I mean, you know, we are spiritual people. We're always in a transition. You know, Isaiah 43 is doing a new thing. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm prophetically accurately pinpointed right now. And you're going to know exactly why, according to scripture and historical repetitive data, why I'm declaring this. But... Things are coming to an end. Enough is enough. Martin Luther stood up and said, enough is enough. He took the hammer like the Maccabees, which is the word of God. And he took the nails and he took the 95 thesis, which is like the word of the Lord, the emancipation proclamation, which is like your vote. Come on, cast your vote. Go in person and vote in person. I have a dream. I have a word. This is the word of God. I've been sent by heaven. I have the prophetic word, the manuscript, the Magna Carta. I have the written prophecy. I have the papers. I have the check. And bam, you fight in the name of Jesus. Somebody say bam, bam. Thanks for our hearts and likes. So one man, one man, Martin Luther, Hear me, of the elite, number one. Number two, enough is enough. Number three, took a stand. Number four, confronted the religious system and spirit of the day. And guess what? Kamehameha! Guess what? It's a mega, mega baby. After that was a revolution called the Reformation. The reformation of the church. A reformation from within. And this is what I really want to talk about today. Hear me now. Reformation of the church. Amen. And that's where Protestants, because we, we protest. Come on, we protest. No, I don't agree with that. What, what does it say in the, in the Bible, in the word of God? And guess what? Hear me now, please. I know, I know I'm kind of everywhere. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing the weave, you know, I'm doing the weave. Did you, did you know the Reformation started around the same time as the Renaissance in Europe? Wow. Ho, Shabbat 
Shoo. You know what renaissance means? Of course, it's a French word, renaissance. Like croissant, renaissance. Renaissance in French means to be born again. And the renaissance was a time in Europe where, where there was such enlightenment. And now there was science, there was art, there was health, there was medicine, there was colors. There was a renaissance, a born again experience all across Europe, enlightenment. Why? Do you know why? Because of the reformation. Because of Martin Luther's taking a stand. He said enough is enough. The Bible should be in the hand of every common person. So what did Martin Luther do? He began to print with the Gutenberg Press. With the Gutenberg Press. I know there's a lot of history. And I've taken more than four minutes, so I'm sorry. But he began to print with the Gutenberg Press little Biblias for the common day people. So hear me now. The Renaissance, science, art, color, sculpture, architecture, medicine, health. All of this got birthed because the core of the Reformation, of the Word of God. Are you hearing me today? The Lord is about to shift culture. Reformation means to change the form. Reform. Do you not know? Hear me. God is reforming you. Yes, He's reviving you, but He's also reforming you. Your form is changing. Y'all, it's almost Thanksgiving. Get your stretchy pants ready. Just kidding. Your form is changing. Hallelujah. We're going from fellowship to fellow shape. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you see, your form is changing. Reform. So Martin Luther, because one act of obedience, because of one prophetic action, there was a whole reformation, and eventually there was... A renaissance. <laughs> God's changing your form. And you know, that reminds me of the old wineskin and the new wineskin. How can you put it together? You can't. If you put new wine in an old wineskin, it will burst. It will burst. So that's what God's doing with you right now. He's calling you out like Martin Luther. You're saying a line's drawn in the sand. Enough is enough, Dr. Ben. Enough is enough. I need to get my health in order. I got to get my finances in order. I got to get my life back in order. Enough is enough. Bam, bam. Let's nail this thing to the cross. Nail this thing. Let's, you know, let's break through this thing. And then boom, reformation comes. And I'm saying all of this because some people think today's Halloween. I'm going to say this. The devil steals, kills, and destroys. So this is not the devil's day. This is actually the Lord's day. Because this is actually the day called Reformation Day. The day where Martin Luther, in the spirit of the sovereign Lord anointing, stood up and he nailed the 95 Thesis and confronted the greatest religious organization institution of the day. So because this is the open portal of Reformation, today... October 31st, therefore the witches and the warlocks and, and the covens and the masons and all the heathens have tried to steal and infiltrate this portal of change and reformation. Does that make sense? The devil cannot create, so he steals. Just like the Yankees fan tried to steal the ball from the mitt of the Dodgers player. I don't even know what, what the name of the player is. Just like the left and the Democrats are trying to steal our votes. The devil can only steal. He cannot create. So today, actually, October 31st belongs to the Lord. Amen. It belongs to God. Every day belongs to God. Every day, every minute, every hour belongs to God. Every season of my life, whether it rains, whether it's super dry, whether I'm in the mountaintop, I'm in the valley low, ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low. Doesn't matter where I am, everything belongs to God. Nothing belongs to the devil. Do you know why? Because Jesus bankrupted heaven and fully destroyed hell. Therefore, he has the keys of death and Hades. He lost another one. He lost again. 
Come on, Jesus did it again. He's going to do it again. Come on, somebody. Oops, he did it again. Jesus is going to do it again. Again and again and again. I know I, I sound a little ridiculous today. I'm quite animated today. Eccentric. Because. Oh. Sometimes you could get a little foolish in the Lord. Hallelujah. That Lance Wall now. <laughs> Lance Wall now anointing. <laughs> Prophets are eccentric. Prophetic people are eccentric. Hallelujah. So the weave, going back to the Korean weave. That Korean weave that is so coveted across the world. Amen. There is a reformation taking place. And today belongs to the Lord. Okay. So shine your light. Don't be afraid. Don't hide your light under a bushel and say, uh, I'm so scared to go. Uh, uh. I mean, unless you see Joe Biden trying to bite the feet of babies. I mean, what a creepo. Creepy Joe. <laughs> Creepy Joe and Chameleon Harris. My gosh. You're fired, Chameleon, comrade, Kamalika, Kamala, liar, Kamala Jezebel. You're fired. Hey, Amen. We're going to throw, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. We're taking this country back. <sighs> everybody I talk, nearly everybody I talk with. You know, I just met a friend last night. He's from Slovenia. Hear me. A little country in Europe called Slovenia. That's where Melania Trump is from. Slovenia. And I met this guy on the beach in Phuket, Thailand. <laughs> right? So here we are. We're chatting. And, you know, he follows me on Instagram. And now he's in Dubai. And so we met last night because he just landed. And now I left. <laughs> Anyways, I forgot why I was sharing that. Slovenia. Oh, yeah. I was sharing. Everybody loves Trump. These people in Europe, I, I met a Hungarian guy, a young Hungarian man in Qatar a week ago. He loves Trump. Everybody loves Trump, man. Everybody. It's only the Democrats, the, the people. I, I don't even know how people are so deceived. I don't even know how. How could you not love the man who's serving French fries at McDonald's and has worked longer at McDonald's genuinely even more than Kamala Liar Harris, right? Man, I, I, I felt teary, you know, I, I, I was so emotional <laughs> when I saw those photos and videos of President Trump at a McDonald's. I mean, oh, and then what the, the CEO of Google calls President Trump and says, that is literally the most searched in history on Google ever, President Trump at McDonald's. Make McDonald's affordable again. I mean, who eats that crap anyways? But make McDonald's affordable again, you know? Anyways, let's go back to the weave. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Reformation. Today is Reformation Day. Today is Reformation Day. And a Halloween is Reformation Day. And uh, God is doing a new thing. He's... He's changing your form he's changing the wineskin how you do things and listen if you're if you're if you're like me okay which you are right elijah was a man just like me and you you and i like us so if you're anything like me of course we're people of prayer and you know we're praying into the new year we're praying into new things greater things my gosh i'm telling you 2025 is going to be awesome it is going to be awesome, y'all. It's going to be so incredible. In the words of Elon Musk, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be so awesome. And uh, I believe we're going to see a red wave landslide, 100%. We already did the last two uh, elections. We already did. But I believe November 5th, Tuesday, we're going to see a red wave, red landslide, tsunami wave. Amen. But great change is coming. Great change. And your form is changing. God is changing your wineskin. He is shifting your form. You're coming out of the cocoon like a butterfly. 
They're coming out of the cocoon. Amen. I know. I know God's been changing my life. I'm, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful. All right. I want to say one more thing. You know, it's been my greatest honor to be able to meet with and encourage leaders who are in the trenches, on the front grounds, on the front lines, in the battlegrounds. And I mean, who comes to places like Qatar and Bahrain to minister? Like, who goes to Dubai, right? Everyone goes there, you know, for to be an Instagram influencer. But um, I'm just really encouraged and grateful that God has allowed me and this ministry, all of you watching right now, you're, and there's Pastor Ranjeep from uh, Qatar right there, Doha, Qatar. He's just logging in right now on this live broadcast. So everybody say hello to Pastor Ranjit. But I'm just so encouraged and grateful that God has allowed me and us together, together we're doing it, to be able to encourage men and women of God across the nations to help lift up their arms like Aaron and Hur did with Moses and just encourage and speak life and say, you're not alone. We're with you. The body of Christ is bigger than what you see. If God is for you, who can be against you? And for me to physically be there in the trenches, be present with these people, eat with them, smell like them. And trust me, some of them are smelly, all right? Eat with them, smell like them, fellowship with them, hug them, hold them, pray with them. That is the greatest honor. And, you know, these are not just regular church goers. These are men and women of God. These are ministers of the gospel. So if you touch and bless one gatekeeper, then you could touch a whole nation. You could touch a whole region. And as I review this year, 2024, it's been a phenomenal year. All the glory goes to God. Many new doors, many new places, many new connections. But I'm so grateful um, and, and again, you, many of you guys don't see it. I'm actually doing apostolic pastoral work, right? But many of you don't see it. I mean, what you see is this, right? Or, but there's so much behind the scenes. My gosh, I'm just so encouraged. It is such an honor to be there present, to be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus in countries, regions, the darkest places of the world, where nobody knows, nobody knows their name, not, you know, they're not in the mainstream prophetic, prophetic charismatic magazines and things in America. <laughs> Anyways, we do this for the audience of one. His name's Jesus. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach. And he deserves all our praise, all our worship. And hear me now, I'm gonna end with this. I know, and once again, November 3rd, Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard, I'm going to release the prophetic word of the month for November. We have to reschedule it today. But, and if you're going to be there, say, I'm there, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard. But I want to say this. I know many of us, we've been going through a lot of testing the last few months. I have. It's been great. You know, it's been great, really. Because I feel like we're coming out of the end of the tunnel now. Especially with the red wave of President Trump coming. Are you ready to cowabunga dude, hang loose? But uh, I know many of us, you know, we've been going through some warfare and stretching and testing and dying the last few months. But I just want to encourage you all. God is changing the form. And you are coming out of the cocoon. You're coming out of the cave. And you're going to spread your wings like a butterfly. And you're going to be born again. And God's going to do a new thing in your life. A new thing in your life. So be encouraged, y'all. I know 2025 is going to be the best year of our lives. 1,000%. And November 5th, we're going to see the greatest victory probably since the Civil War in America. Since World War II, we're going to see such a huge victory in America. I'm telling you, y'all. 
in the name of Jesus, because God is not done with this country. God is not done with America. All right. He's not going to allow, I believe, with all my heart, America to go to hell in a handbasket right now. Not yet. We've repented. We've humbled ourselves. We've sought the face of God. He's cleaned the house. He's got things in order in the church. Amen. So uh, get ready to celebrate. Get ready for victory. Get ready for jubilee, jubilation. Recompense is coming. Recompense. Hallelujah. Well, anyways, I'm here in Bahrain. Manama, Bahrain. Outside of these windows, <laughs> you can see the coast, the ocean. It's awesome. And I'm still tripping out. The Bahrain currency is the second strongest currency in the world. Come on, Lord. The wealth of the nations, I receive it. I receive the wealth of the nations. That's why I'm here. That's why we're here sowing into the land <laughs> because it's going to return to all of you connected to Benlin Ministries. Can I get an amen? It's going to return. Someone has to do the hard work. Someone has to go. And maybe you're not able to go internationally, but together we are. Let me be your missionary. Let me, let me be your missionary to go and do, encourage these leaders, preach the gospel, minister to these souls, break open heaven, in part, in these countries, nations, regions, that most people don't go and you, maybe you won't be able to go because of work or your family or whatnot, but here I am, we're here together. Amen. God is good. God is good. Anyways, I love you guys. Miss you all. I know it's like it's like we're drifting away on social media land. Jack, Jack, Jack. It's like we're drifting away on Facebook social media land because I've been so busy traveling and and uh, you know. But anyways, I still love you all. I still love you all. I appreciate you all. I wouldn't be here without you. I, I can't do what I'm doing without you. And so we are truly reaping harvest together. And uh, I'm just so excited. Consistency is everything. You know, consistency is everything. And uh, that apostolic perseverance is everything. That apost Thank you, Susan Irwin, for being a nine-month subscriber. God bless you. Apostolic perseverance is everything. Amen. And uh, all right, let me give you one verse and then I will end. Did you enjoy it today? If you didn't, you can rewatch it until you enjoy it. Ecclesiastes 9, 11 to 12. I returned. I don't like the King James Version. Because then I'll have to read like I'm a Shakespearean. Ecclesiastes in 9-11. Wow, 9-11. Get that. Alert, alert. Ecclesiastes 9-11. Again, I saw that under the sun, <laughs> the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to those with knowledge, but time and chance happen to them all. Time and chance happen to them all. So, of course, in paraphrase, the race is not given to the rich or to the strong, but the one who endures. We need apostolic perseverance. We need to learn to endure. When a son of man returns to the earth, will he find faith on the earth? And we need to learn to endure and to press, persevere. Actually, I wish I had some cake. Because today is actually my spiritual birthday. That's right, y'all. October 31st, 2009. I gave my life to Jesus. At the YWAM base in Newcastle, Australia. October 31st, 2009. That's when I gave my life to God. <clears throat> so today is actually my spiritual birthday. And it's been 15 years now, 15 years. 
And all the glory goes to God. 15 years. So here we are. Here I am. Amen. Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. So anyways, I love you guys. Let's continue to pray for President Trump. Exposure of all election interference <clears throat> as well. Pray for me to finish strong on Saturday, literally midnight, I'm flying back. Not midnight, Saturday, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I'm flying back to DC, then we have our prayer event in DC uh, up to the election, so pray with us in the DMV prayer strike. Amen. I'm excited, just so excited. It is Reformation Day, so happy Reformation Day, y'all. Love you, God bless. Shalom. Will you be like Martin Luther? Will you take a stand and say enough is enough and confront prophetically, apostolically, the religious spirits of the day? Enough is enough. Is that you? If that's you, say amen. See you for the prophetic word of the month for November, November 3rd, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard. Love you all. Bless you. Shalom. Salam ji. Salam walaikum.